Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages Florida podcast. In this show we talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs and interesting folks who live here in the villages, to give perspectives of what is happening here in the villages. We hope to add a new episode most Fridays at 9 a.m. We are a listener-supported podcast. You can become a supporter for as little as $3 per month, or you can choose to pay more. To become a supporter go to openforminthevillages.com and click on support in the black box. There will be shoutouts for supporters in episodes. In season 4, we have made some dramatic improvements and changes. First is a clarification of the podcast's title. It is Open Forum in the Villages Florida to make clear that this is a regional show, independently produced for folks who live in Central Florida and the Villages areas. Second is a dramatic increase in the use of AI in the creation of each episode. In fact the show's announcers are now all AI voices, including me, Emily. Hope you enjoy. This is Mike Roth on Open Forum in the Villages. Today's show is going to be a little bit different. Today, we're going to be going out to the Cars and Coffee behind Fidelity Investments in the Lake Sumter area. I'm going to be talking to, first, a couple of Porsche people about the cars they brought. Then I'm going to have an interesting conversation with a couple of members of the Tesla Club about the Tesla cars that they brought. I think it was a Model Y and the SUV. And then we're actually going to be able to hear that Tesla play Happy Birthday as all the doors and go up and down and the windshield wipers and lights flash. But it's a nice little trick. And we, we talk about some of the autonomous driving features that are now available on Tesla and are going to be coming on the Mercedes-Benz S-Class for the 2024 model year. As I was recording this event outdoors with a portable digital recorder, the sound quality is substantially below the sound quality which we get here in the studio. However, I thought the information was quite valuable and therefore I'm including it in the show. This is Mike Roth on Open Forum in the Villages. I'm talking with Timber Kirby. Timber, tell, tell our listeners about your report. I'd say uh, 2021 base Boxster that I have changed a little bit. I just upgraded to 20 inch wheels. Okay. I've uh, put a uh, 6,000 miles on it last summer doing 16 states and six driving days. Drives, it, the car is smarter than the driver, uh, especially when you get around the bendy bits. It, what, what's it, that smarter than the driver? It knows where to go. It just glued to the road. Wherever you steer it, it's going. It's amazing. So it has uh, self-driving features? No, it doesn't. <laughs> the self-driving is actually the pilot case, but uh, it knows how to get away from curbs and everything else. With all the pretty, got about 44 miles to a gallon on the road. Probably get around 24 around town. How- is that a six-cylinder or four? four. It's a uh, four blown seven. four twin, twin turbos. Oh, yeah, it only has 300 horsepower. But I'm probably going to upgrade to the sole pipes, and I can get another horsepower out of that just for a little deeper sound. For those who don't know what a sole pipe is, it? Uh, it's an exhaust made made for all the sports cars. It's one of the big manufacturers, very reliable exhaust. Great. Claude, anything else you want to tell our listeners about your car? Uh, no, just come to our sat- last Saturdays. Come meet everybody. Uh, it's a great group of people here. Yeah, we're talking about the cars and coffee. Yes. Last Saturday of the month Yep. in the parking lot that's directly behind right. Fidelity Investments. And, it, and I think we have enough groups. Uh, Mercedes has a huge group, right? Right. And we have a BMW a Corvette group, I know. Yes. Porsche group. Right. And uh, they're, they're getting very active. See, the Porsche group is growing by leaps and bounds this year compared to last year. Oh, yeah, are you? Yeah. How many members is the Porsche group up to? Uh, we had 80 cars go last Saturday for our lunch over in Crystal River. Yeah. Where did you have lunch that had it? can accommodate 80 people? Caesars. Car, Cedars Seafood right there on uh, 19 in Crystal River. We've been to Plantation. We've been to M- McAnobie. Yeah. Uh, we've been to um, the old train station up in, yeah, in McAnobie. We've been to Palatka. I'm not from around here, so I'm guessing at these names. I've pardon pronounce. I've uh, been to probably some other place I can't pronounce. <laughs> okay, thanks. This is Mike Roth with Dr. Craig Curtis for today's Alzheimer's tip. Dr. Curtis, is there any type of treatment today for patients with Alzheimer's which would reverse the progno- the progression of the disease? Mike, unfortunately, we do not have any medication today that can reverse the progress of Alzheimer's disease. What we are showing is that the newer medications can help slow the progression by approximately 30%, but we do not currently have any way of halting the progression of Alzheimer's disease nor reversing Alzheimer's disease. That's why we're still doing research. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. With over 20 years of experience studying brain health, Dr. Curtis's goal is to educate the village's community on how to live a longer, healthier life. To learn more, visit his website, 
CraigCurtisMD.com or call 352-500-5252 to attend a free seminar. Very nice. Yeah, my neighbors are crazy about And I like, I, I play the boombox works, but only oh, in yeah. park. I wish they would have uh, left it. Mm-hmm. And with the different horns it plays and yeah. stuff. Yeah, hey, I, I need that. I need that. Safety uh, department. I need that yeah. antique horn for uh, to get the walkers out of the way. Yeah. Because the car is so quiet. Yeah. You you come up behind people and they don't hear you coming. By the way, I'm talking to your name. I'm Pat. Pat. McQuillan. And we're, t- we're talking on Open Forum in the Villages podcast. Okay. Oh. I kind of guessed that thing. It was either that or your fancy tel- cell phone. No, it's not a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be able to listen to it there in about a month. Oh, okay. Great. So, so Pat, could you, could you play that? Uh, you want me to play it again? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. My daughter's on. Uh, you're talking about the, the radio here in the village? No, 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 no. no. This, this is, is on the okay. internet, This right? is on the internet. It's on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me uh, okay, watch your head. Man. i got to close everything up. Start fresh. Yeah, this will make a biker fall. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. His is a six-seater. Mine's a five-seater. Oh, okay. He actually has two seats uh, way in the back there and gold wings. Yeah, yours doesn't have the gold wings. Uh, no, mine's a, mine is an SUV actually. It's a little higher off the ground than his, and it's you could sleep in the back of it. So big, and it's got the most storage of any other of the Teslas, right? Mm-hmm. We'll have to maybe go. This has auto close too. I walk oh. away. That door closed on its own. But I'll just give it a push, would you? Uh, push your hand. Oh, yeah. didn't even need oh, to didn't, touch didn't it. It was ready it? to go. Yeah, it it opens when you walk up to it. There you go. So what prevents the uh, the doors from hitting a car that's adjacent to it in a tight parking lot? It knows. It knows how. <laughs> it knows how close it is. See the, the wing doors? They'll yeah. either they'll either come out and up, or they'll go up and up, ah. depending on what's close. Yeah, it's an intelligent car. And this one has self, full self-driving. <clears throat> I was explaining I came here from Belvedere and didn't didn't have to take off the self-driving till I got to the intersection. Yeah, you, you mean it's it's a level two self-driving? I'm not sure what level it is, but it's uh, <clears throat> it's the highest. I have the beta, the latest beta version of the self-driving. Yeah, I don't I don't know what what that means. Well, for me, it's a version it's, number. It'll pretty well take you to the place you want to go in a city. Mm-hmm. No problem. Well. Uh, there are only two places in the country that have self-driving approved San, legally on the San, road. San Francisco. San Francisco. No, He's, actually, it's uh, California yeah. and in Nevada. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you turn your car on full self-driving mode here, yeah, in Florida, you still have to keep a trouble. hand. You have to keep your hands yeah, on the wheel. Yeah. You you have to keep your hand on the wheel or within so many seconds. And, and in fact, self-driving those states where it's so-called legal, you can't go more than forty miles an hour. Yeah. This is a different thing. Uh, we can go up to eighty-five. You've got to have your hand on the steering wheel but with the latest update because people were cheating they'd hang something on the steering wheel yeah. they monitor it with the internal cam so and that can through your eyes so if you're sure yeah you're if you're screwing around awake. if your eyes are closed and you're in trouble yeah it's not good and i when i first got it i took my cell phone and i picked it up and it just went bananas beeping red lights flashing it's a, you do that four more times and we shut you off so they're they're very cautious the mercedes has self-driving feature mm-hmm. you know at level two yeah enhanced cruise control i think well, is one it, word it, for it. well no enhanced cruise control but it's also self-driving it'll mm-hmm. keep you within the lane lines yeah okay problem is that where the lane lines fail mm-hmm. the car may try to drive off the road yeah, we had when I first took delivery. I was headed 18. When I first took delivery. That was pretty much what they considered that full. But every four to six weeks, I get a new update, and now it'll go down. Um, I don't remember the name of that road, but it will go down a road with 
no lane marking. And uh, normally what it does, it stays in the center of the lane until there's oncoming traffic, it pulls over until they pass. Uh, what, what happens on a road like 44 where the uh, right lane markings disappear well, in I mean, many places? Yeah, is 44 the one that goes south off Rolling Acres? Well, it goes east and west, it. really. 44. Oh, well, this is a north. Oh, I don't. I don't. Um, there's one. See, five. Rolling Acres doesn't have a, a, a right lane. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Not Rolling Acres. A rainy trail. Uh, a rainy trail is fine, but as soon as I turn left. On 301? Uh, no, before 301. It's a dirt, it's it's not a dirt road, but it's an unmarked. I know what you're talking about. I've been there. Okay. Yeah. That, it will handle that. It yeah, it, it, there's no lane markings at all, and it will go down the center until someone's coming. It'll move over, they pass. So yeah, yeah it can do that. The, the, these self-driving features are an area of development for the, the next model year on Mercedes S Class. Yeah, they're, they're going to have they have level three, okay, which fully autonomous self-driving, below 40 miles an hour. Oh, well, see, I can again, like I said, mine can go up deep. But, but before I forget, I want to tell you a story. Go ahead. This happened at, a, at one of the Tesla, well, one of the car shows at Brownwood about, well, it was less than a year ago. It doesn't matter. Last. Anyway, I was talking to father, son, and grandson. And I said, when your grandson is our age, he's going to be down here. He's going to tell his grandchildren, when I was your age, my father's car had a steering wheel. And this kid pipes up, yeah, and it was on the ground. The car was on the ground. Oh, he, he's oh, anticipating hoverboards, hover cars. Hoover cars. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's a whole different animal. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Well, you, you don't have frictional brakes. You don't need them. I don't, uh, I don't use a brake at all here. No, no, we don't. use the brake. Yeah. drive like, it that, in one pedal mode. That one pedal up and down. Yeah, high, get the hang of it, except for emergencies. In, in Mercedes, that's called recuperation, mm -hmm. high recuperation, yeah. and uh, the brake pedals are still available. Right. But for most stops, they're not necessary. Exactly. That motor holds. And the motor holds it. You will actually hold the car at a stop, turn mm -hmm. on creep mode. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. I talked to a gentleman uh, over at the fitness center. I saw him there about two months ago. I had the car. He had a motorcycle. He says, started to ask me questions. He said, well, I take delivery of mine tomorrow. He literally was one. So now I see him two months later in the fitness. I asked him how I, he liked it. He got the Model S. Uh, the high body. He said, well, we drove it. I'll never go, I'll never go back to another car. <laughs> and and that's pretty much what I'm uh, feeling about this one. That uh, president of the Tesla Club, the past president, mm -hmm. he used to drive his on the racetrack and see oh yeah because he was saying how many wheels how, how many tires, tires he had to wear yeah. yeah yeah he, well th that's an interesting question so you take your, your tesla out to the racetrack and putting it on the racetrack you're going to burn the battery down a lot faster how where do you recharge oh that's right yeah about three about three runs and your battery close to dead yeah. but he was talking about what it does tires uh, because he's well i said i'm going to need a new set of tires <laughs> well and tires is another, another story altogether yeah. you never have to worry about getting stuck tesla i just took a trip up to uh kentucky it'll plan it all out for it. if you let it do the planning yep it'll take care of it all and how I, low do you, you let the battery go Ten, uh, it, if you let it decide, it usually stakes between 20 and 80 normally, 20 mm -hmm. and 80 yeah. percent, you know. <clears throat> they think that's the efficient way to travel. But uh, I let it go down <clears throat> purposely because I plan my own stops. I enjoy doing that. Yeah. And uh, I was headed to Alabama and then up to Kentucky. And it started warning me and said, wait, uh, there's a tell me where there was a supercharger. And I just kept driving because I was going to, I use a home charger. I carry a mobile charger in my frunk in the front here. Well, the, the, and I was going 110 to... 110 volt charger? Yeah. yeah, it's 110 or 230. I can do either one. 240 mm -hmm. rather. Uh, it's 120 and 240. So anyway, uh, it says you're about to pass the point of no return if you don't turn on the such and such. So it's looking out for you. But I, I knew it, no problem. I ran it down 10%, but I plugged it into their, their home because yeah. I was going to stay there two days. And yeah, uh, that works. Let it charge back I, up. Yeah. I, I call that the brother in law cable. Yeah. <laughs> it's, in fact, I went out and yeah. bought a 100 foot heavy, really the heaviest construct cord, extension cord I could get. And when I travel, I throw that in. And yeah, there you go. Same See, See, well, it's not a heavy duty cord. No, mine's, mine's super heavy. Yeah. Um, but uh, still, here, this will take 30 amps at any RV center here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this right here is about as heavy as you can buy for a cord. This should be 12.3. That, that, that's probably only a 15 amp. That's a 15 amp. Yeah, it's got a 15 amp receptacle, but it's a uh, it's actually a 20 amp uh, mm -hmm. yeah, capability. Uh, 
but yeah, maybe the connectors would get hot. But you can limit how much current it takes by yeah. this or by the car. So if I'm plugged up at somebody's home, I'll plug into 15 and make a charge at 12 amp, which is, what is that, 80% of what you're allowed to go in a receptacle. And if they've got other things on the circuit that they're using, I can kick it down to however low I want. Of course, you know, here, everybody's got a golf cart outlet right in their garage, which is what I would, well, here's the other thing. Not everyone has a golf cart outlet. We and, have, and, and we have, huge, I suppose. We, 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 we just, we have an electric golf cart, and we paid $150 to have a separate 15-amp circuit brought to where the electric wow. cable is, is, is going to charge. Uh, is it a, No. Okay, no, we, we got, we got, I got the my wife the Atomic, four-door yeah, Atomic nice. for her birthday two, three years ago. Yeah, and that's an amazing, have you ever look at them? Yes. Feel, I mean, yeah. I wanted it for the crash, I think. Remember our next episode will be released next Friday at 9 a.m. Should you want to become a major supporter of the show or have questions, please contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. This is a shout out for supporters, Greg Pangian, Tweet Coleman, Dan Capellan, Ed Williams, Alvin Stenzel, and major supporter Dr. Craig Curtis at K2 in the Villages. We will be hearing more from Dr. Curtis with short Alzheimer's tips each week. If you know someone who should be on the show, contact us at mike at rothvoice.com. We thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyrighted by Roth Voice 2023. All rights reserved.